Hey, what's up? I'm Ara, aka I Eat Zebra, and welcome back to the channel. I'm back with another Yellow Jackets theory, but what else is new? If this is your first time watching one of my videos, you can check out my other Yellow Jackets videos linked in the description below. Today is the day we finally tackle the pick girl theory, but not how you think. We're not covering where is pick girl or who is pick girl, but why is pick girl? If you're wondering what that means, join me for a bit of a deep dive into what I'm referring to as the ritual called the hunt. If you have not seen up to season two, episode eight, it chooses, this video will contain major spoilers for that episode, so you've been warned. The pilot of Yellow Jackets opens up with the infamous girl running barefoot in the woods in a white dress and a gold necklace. While we can hear people howling in the background while she is being chased, the girl then falls into a pit. She is then prepared as a meal and served to several masked Yellow Jackets and the Antler Queen. Since that day, people have been wondering which of the Yellow Jackets is Pit Girl, with one of the strongest contenders being Mari, which again, is not the point of this video. I believe what we saw was the ritual called the hunt. The hunt is when an individual is chosen to be a sacrifice to feed the others at its most basic level. For the group, it is a religious ritual and the way they see and practice that ritual is really layered and I'm going to break it all down for you. In episode eight of season two, we get our first real hunt chronologically. Before I break down what happens, we need to know why it's happening to begin with. Lottie gets beat up by Shauna. She lets Shauna attack her to get out her anger and grief over the loss of her baby. She did that because Shauna plays a crucial part in their community as the butcher. In the hunt, Shauna plays another role, but more on that later. Shauna kicks Lottie's kidneys and brutalizes her face. Lottie is sick and on the brink of death. Missy is the one primarily nursing Lottie. Lottie tells Misty if she dies to have the others make use of her. Lottie, like the others, are all starving. However, unlike the others, Lottie is special. She is their leader and spiritual guide. The others refuse to let her die. Mari believes the wilderness would keep her alive, but as Nat points out, that Lottie, like everyone else, is starving and she needs to eat. With Lottie's life on the line, they come to the conclusion someone needs to sacrifice themselves to keep the group alive. A life for a life. That is where the hunt comes in. The group decides they will draw cards like they do for their chores, but whoever draws the Queen of Hearts will be the one chosen to give their life. That was the plan, which didn't work out. Nat was the unlucky one to draw the Queen of Hearts. Shauna had a knife to her throat and was hesitating. Travis intervened and gave Nat an opportunity to escape. The girls then attempted to hunt Nat down. Javi tried to assist Nat by leading her to his old refuge, but before they could reach it, he fell through the ice. The girls hunting Nat took this as a sign that the wilderness chose Javi who we will ultimately see served up in the finale. I'll be honest, that scene was really hard to watch. The similarities between what happened to Pit Girl and what occurred during the episode are numerous. As time goes on, this ritual sacrifice will evolve to be what we saw in the pilot. But let's get into the ceremony in more depth first. The card, the Queen of Hearts, has an interesting meeting in Cardomancy. Cardomancy is the art of using playing cards as a form of divination, similar to tarot. Each card has different meanings and interpretations. The upright meaning of the Queen of Hearts is compassion, warmth, healer, supportive, divine feminine, and unconditional love. The reverse meaning is fragile, dependent, overgiving, and martyr. For a card meant to signify a sacrifice, it is fitting. Once someone draws a card, a necklace is put on their neck. The necklace belonged to Jackie, and she was wearing it when she died. Jackie was the first person they consumed to stay alive. Jackie's death was a result of falling asleep outside the night of the first snow. The wilderness chose Jackie. The necklace is put on the next sacrifice as a symbol for the ritual. It's a form of regalia in a sense. Speaking of regalia, there is an altar based on an animal skull, I believe it is the bear they were living off of for a while. On the altar, there is a hair clip, scrunchies, some hair, a red tube, blood, and a knife. 
The knife is used by the executioner, who happens to also be the butcher, which is Shauna. In the first hunt, Nat is saved by Travis. She saved his life during Doom Coming when Shauna had a knife to his throat. He in turn saves Nat's life and gives her a chance to escape, leading the girls to hunt her down. Going forward, I believe whoever draws a card rather than getting killed on the spot is given a head start. Like the Antler Queen therapist told Lottie, does a hunt that has no violence feed anyone? In their eyes, the wilderness will choose who it wants to sacrifice. Nat and Travis were both on the other end of Shauna's blade at some point, and neither of them died. Jackie died in Travis's dead, and Javi died for Nat. The wilderness chose Jackie and Javi, as both of their deaths were caused by nature, freezing to death and falling through ice. Showing that at the end of the day, even if they try to choose, it's not always their choice. Allowing someone to get a head start leaves room for nature to still run its course. Whoever dies first ends the ritual, whether it be predator or prey. Now that we've covered how the hunt works, let's get into the rules of the ritual. The rules aren't officially canon, so if you have a better name for some of them, drop it in the comments. Let's start with our master of ceremonies, if you will, the Antler Queen. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I believe the Antler Queen is Lottie, or working through Lottie. I know people say it could be Nat, Ty, or even Shauna, why I really don't know since the figure presents itself most to Lottie and she's a cult leader so it just makes sense. Lottie initiates the first informal hunt in season 1 during Doom Coming. She leads everyone to Travis and is only thwarted when Nat intervenes, however she is the head of it. When we see the first actual ritual in season 2, she isn't obviously pres presiding over the ceremony but is still involved. She not only saw visions of the hunt in the opening scene of the episode, her being on the brink of death is the cause of it. In the pit girl scene, we don't see Lottie in the beginning, but in the end, she is the one that nods to give approval for them to eat, like she did with Jackie. Due to this being a spiritual ritual, and her being their spiritual leader, her role is crucial in the hunt. Next, we have the sacrifice. This is the person nominated by the group to be the martyr. So far, Travis and Nat were both chosen for this position. I'm assuming Pit Girl was as well. Travis was chosen because he was being persecuted for an offense taken by the group. Nat was chosen by Lot, which I believe would be the case for most, including Pit Girl. Even if you are chosen to be the sacrifice, it does not necessarily seal your fate. The executioner is also the group's butcher, Shauna. Shauna survives the woods, so we know she is most likely the one and only person to serve this role. Shauna was originally poised to be one of the one to carry out the initial sacrifices, but was stopped twice. However, her role as executioner will stand in future hunts. The Eucharist is who ultimately dies and will serve as a meal for everyone else. If you don't know what a Eucharist is, it's usually a wafer or something similar meant to represent the body of Christ that you would eat during communion. In Christianity, it is believed Jesus died for our sins, therefore saving humanity. Seeing as a person that is going to be consumed, dive to save the others, that's what I'm rolling with. We have seen three Eucharists so far, Pit Girl, Jackie, and very soon to be Javi. The next role is unofficial in the hunt, but it just so happened to occur in both Doom Coming and It Chooses. Let me introduce the Rogue. The Rogue is an individual who wanders off from the group on their own. Javi was the first rogue and was urged to run away from Shauna. He then found shelter in a cavern protected by a symbol tree. Javi was able to survive there by himself for two months before ultimately being found by Ty and Van and brought back to the cabin. Coach Ben gets out, to the, out of the cabin before the hunt even begins. Nat told Ben she saw Javi bowing to a tree. He then searched Javi's suitcase and found a picture of that tree. Using Van's maps and snowproofing his crutches, he sets off on his mission. Ben ultimately finds the tree. How long he'll be able to hide out there, we'll see. The girls aren't really checking for Ben outside of Nat and Travis, and with Javi dead in the place of Nat, both Travis and Natalie will have a lot more on their minds than Ben's whereabouts. Seeing as Javi was the last rogue and is now the most recent Eucharist, it's not really looking good for Ben. Now that we have an idea on how the ritual works, Let's get into how the first chronological hunt in It Chooses evolves into the first hunt we see in the pilot, aka Pit Girl. 
The ritual of the hunt was born out of desperation to survive the harsh Canadian winter and to keep Lottie alive. We see a spiritual-like ceremony with the sacrifice being chosen by fate. They keep their regalia on an altar to the wilderness. Once Travis interfered and they had, a cha had to chase Natalie, they were acting out of their most primal instincts, which led them to move in a pack. They howl and hunt like any other predator in the wilderness. The person they ultimately consume is prepared and they have a feast to honor that sacrifice. We know they're stuck in the wilderness for 18 months. This is the first winter and they have another one to get through. They most likely get rescued at the end of the second winter and the latest being the very beginning of spring. During the spring, summer, and fall, there's game to hunt, so I doubt they're going to ritually sacrifice anyone in a hunt. They're stuck in the wilderness after all, so there are a lot of ways to die. I do believe now that they have a taste for flesh. If someone dies, they may still consume them. I would hope not if they can bury or burn them, but I highly doubt it. If it's deemed to be a natural death by the wilderness, they will see it in a spiritual way. That person is therefore a Eucharist and should be consumed. With the experience of the first winter soon behind them, they'll be more prepared for the next one. With that being said, they're going to start keeping more furs and pelts from the games that they catch. These materials will also be used for future costumes to be worn during the hunt or other rituals they develop in the woods. The more the rituals continue, the more formal they will grow to be ultimately what we see in the pilot. I think Pit Girl is actually the final hunt before they are rescued. If this is the case, we've now seen three hunts. The spontaneous trial run in Dune Coming, the first official choosing in, it chooses, and the final hunt in the pilot. Based on the previews for the finale, we may be seeing one more in the present day. I know I've covered a lot here, <laughs> But to simplify it, Pit Girl is ultimately a sacrifice in a spiritual ritual I refer to as the hunt. As to the actual identity of Pit Girl, it seems like it will probably be Mari, but we will see. All I know is Pit Girl was an intended sacrifice for the survival of the group and ultimately the Antler Queen. How many hunts do you think we will see in the show? Let me know in the comments below. My crazy speculation is they will have monthly hunts in the second winter, probably around like the full moon. Why that? I don't know. It just feels right to my inner ear. Like we, even though season two of Yellow Jackets is getting ready to wrap up, I still have some more Yellow Jackets themed content coming your way. If there are other series you'd like to see me cover, let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for future uploads. See you next time. Bye.